Hell yes or hell no. That's the first book I ever wrote back in 81, 82, was a little booklet titled Hell Yes and Hell No. It's now part of my bigger book, it's a chapter. Uh, I was looking through a lot of books that I have uh, talking about Christian doctrine. A lot of it trying to do what we're doing here and kind of correct it and dig into it. And I found it interesting that none of them uh, focused on this doctrine of hell. So that tells me that that's uh, something that has, uh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, hell no, they're saying, I'm not dealing with it. But I wanted to deal with it, and that's what we're doing right now. We're kind of trying to deal with some of the more uh, powerful dogmas of Christianity and learn a little about them. Uh, again, I want to make it clear to you that I'm not in any way trying to judge anything. I'm just trying to give you information and research. It is always up to you to decide what you want to choose to believe. Uh, that is your power to do so, not mine. I'm not trying to convince anybody. I'm not trying to manipulate anybody to any belief system whatsoever because as you that are attending Wednesdays know that the power is in self-knowledge. So we, we've learned in Wednesday that we read books and we listen to messages like this uh, because if some of that that is said, whether the brain understands it or not, attaches to our innate intelligence, it will bring us up, it will bring it up to consciousness and we will have an experience of self-knowledge. Everybody get that? Not David's knowledge, or not Jesus' knowledge, or Paul's knowledge, or anybody else's knowledge. Find your knowledge, because everybody has this innate part of themselves that is called many things. Universal consciousness, Christ consciousness, Holy Spirit. It's just called many different things. But it is the part of you uh, that the universe has coded itself into the aspects of your, of your minds. And uh, that's why we love this thing about, ready? Let the same mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. I love that, as you know. So, uh, let's talk about this. I want to thank uh, Reverend Connie for what she, uh, being here last Sunday, did a wonderful job. We was able to see it uh, from Jamaica, and uh, also we uh, saw Michael on Wednesday, which was just excellent. So thank you, Mr. Bartlett, uh, for your stepping up. And uh, it was just good to see us continue to function as a body, as a community of people, rather than just relying on one thing. Uh, the spirit can come in many different forms and many different people, so thank you. Uh, I did talk to uh, Michael, and uh, he kind of felt the same thing I was thinking, but I thought after hearing him and his great expertise in the ability of what he talks about, nutrition, that there might be some of you who would like to do some uh, classes maybe on a Wednesday afterwards where he's going to show you how to make the right smoothies, how he can break it all down and really bring this into an experiential experience. Are you with me? Yes. So it's just not knowledge, but it becomes something experiential uh, that you can learn how to do these wonderful healthy things uh, for yourselves. And I'll tell you people, I would say if I were you, I'd start thinking my health too much going on here and we need to do everything that we can to make ourselves as healthy as we can that's in our power uh, to do so. All right, so we're talking about today on hell yes or hell no. Let's talk a little bit about the history of it. The word hell is in the New Testament and is always translated the Hebrew word Sheol, Sheol or the place of the dead. Sheol translated is 64 times, the word hell is 32 times, and pit is three times. So different words have been uh, translated into the word hell. Now we make it very clear here that we do not believe that God's word starts in English in any way because everything has been translated uh, from other languages. And this is the thing that's missing in Christianity, as far as I'm concerned, that they're not teaching the language and the culture in which these people lived, but we've tried to westernize them and make them like they lived here and they spoke our language. And this is one thing that is uh, 
uh, a mistake, I think, from human beings is we start creating uh, beings of divine uh, wisdom and knowledge and teachers into our image and likeness. We want them to look like us. So you see a picture of Jesus, he's blue-eyed, he's surfing in California, and he's, <laughs> he's white and all of that, and we don't understand that he came from the Middle East, and he would not look that way at all. But we want him to look like us. Us meaning whoever is doing the, the, the teaching or the art whatsoever. So it is our place to search the scriptures that we be not ashamed. Every one of you should be searching and researching for yourself and not just trying to get it all just from me. But this word hell was translated from the languages of Greek and Hebrew, Hades, Tataris, Guiana are words in New Testament which are incorrectly translated hell. The word Hades in the Greek has the same definition as the Hebrew word Sheol, the unseen, and all the above explanation. So there's all these different words is what I'm saying to you that has been translated into the word hell. And how can you understand what hell means unless you understand the words in which it was translated from? So we want to look at a little bit of, of, of that. Um, I want to read a scripture to kind of start with all of this. Um, it's in the book of Hebrews 6 and 2, and I'm going to read it to you from the Mirror Bible. All teachings about ceremonial washings, baptisms, the laying on of hands in order to identify with the slain animal as a sacrifice, and all the teachings pertaining to sin consciousness, including the final resurrection of the dead in order to face judgment, are no longer relevant. No longer relevant. They just don't work to the student who is searching that. So if you're here and you're a Bible student, I hope you have a strong concordance. <laughs> You need a Strong's Concordance. You need to take the advantage that this man took every word in the Bible and translated it from the original language, such as all Hebrew, Aramaic, as well as Greek. So you have to understand, and oftentimes when you do that, it's interesting to find out that when you go back to original language, that word can mean six different meanings in English. Which one do you take? Which one do you take? So it takes responsibility to research. And that's the thing about Christians that I think they miss is they preach everything from the Bible, but they never teach the Bible. They don't teach about the Bible, where the Bible came, what books in the Bible were decided, what books were, were taken out in 315 AD at the Nicene Councils the book of Jasper, many other books that did not make it into the King James Version were just as important as the ones that did. So, we've learned that the true book of God is where? Within. Within. Revelations 5, and I saw one sitting on the throne in the spirit, and he had written a book within, but it had been sealed up by seven seals. And it was so sealed up that nobody felt worthy, here it is, to loose the seals because of the teachings, I'm not good enough, I'm born a sinner, I'm lack, I'm least, and whatever, and then it says, dry your tears up, for one has been found faithful and worthy to loose the seals. So the book is the book written within. <clears throat> so let's look at a little of the teachings of hell. In the old, early Anglo-English one could have said something like, I'm going to place my potatoes in hell. You, that would have been proper. Because the word meant a hole, a grave, or it could be a basement. It could be a place to keep your potatoes cool and to put them into the ground. That's really, when you trace it back to early, early old English, you could have used that word in that way as a hole in the ground, which has become the word grave, right? So everybody thinks that people are put into the ground, literally are in a grave. But most people walking around are in a grave. 
Mm-hmm. Look up the word grave. It doesn't mean a cemetery. It doesn't mean a plot out somewhere. It means a forgotten, darkened mind. So people who are walking in enlightenment and true understanding are walking in the grave of their mind. So thank goodness we can be resurrected out of the, out of the grave uh, in, that, in that way. What is the general accepted common belief of our Western world about hell from the Encyclopedia Americana? The main features of hell as conceived by Hindu, Persian, Grecian, and Christian theologians are essentially the same. Western religious leaders from Roman times borrowed the doctrines of eternal punishment and torment from non-Christian Greek-Roman philosophers. So much of the things that we believe is God's word is only borrowed from others. All poets of modern times, of all the poets that there were at the time of the translations uh, of the King James Bible and the Christian Bibles was Dante. Dante had the greatest influence on the course of civilization regarding hell of any man since uh, his day and his imaginative accounts of a dismal hell. So any of you that have read his works at all, The Divine Comedy, uh, uh, will find that he gives these different rings of hell, which the Catholic Church took that doctrine on because they believed that Dante was so inspired and so divine that they took on his belief. So this is where the term hell comes as a tormenting place of God for punishment came from the poets of Virgil and Dante and those who were influencing the culture of that time. The poem contained phrases such as all hope abandoned, ye who enter there, caught the intention of the world. Now as the church, and I'm talking about the church the early pre-Christian church. And there is a part of of Jesus' teaching and the teachings of the first one and second century that had nothing to do with Christianity as you know it today. That did not happen until the fourth century. At the time that they were putting all of this together and developing what would be the doctrine of Christianity, there was a pre-teaching which we could call mystical Christianity. Every monotheistic religion has that period that that was from the true prophet or visionary before man organized it into a religion with this agenda. Jewish have it in the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is a more mystical, deeper understanding than traditional Jewish teaching. In Islam, it is the Sufi teaching. If you want to see what Islam would have been before it was organized to be what it was, then you would go back into the Sufi teaching. If you wanted to go back before Christianity is legalized and authoritized, you would go back and read the Gnostics. Hmm? And you would read those that were before that time. And much of our teachings, which seems to be uh, so radical and off the rail, fit those times better than it does from 2515 A.D. We do, not, we do not connect with that. Those teachings of, of uh, Jesus, who they decided Jesus to be, who they decided to uh, at that time. And in some energetics, we teach an interesting thing about Uh, the Catholic Church, for instance. The Catholic Church was not not always the Catholic Church that you see today. It, too, has a history before its time that it is organized. And at that time, there was different things like Gregorian chants. The chants were different than they were after 325. Before then, they sang these tones and frequencies that gave people the, the inner power to know themselves, to heal themselves. There were, there were chants and sounds and frequencies that empowered the human soul. But like so many things that has happened that has been organized with this agenda, it moved toward how do we hold the people? 
how we cannot build an organization that's universal and all over the world until we devise a doctrine that holds the people. Well, what holds the people? Fear. Fear became what holds the people. Let's make them so frightened that we will, first of all, build a religion that is very exclusive and the only religion, and we'll dare to call it a universal religion or the word Catholic. That's what Catholic means, universal. So it is the one true and only church and religion, and everything outside of that is therefore not allowed into the grace of God. So then they have to change the image of God. Now God has to become something that is a God that uh, punishes those people who are not a part of that one universal doctrine. And fear became. Now, fear still is the motivation of many, many people. I just watched on, I don't know if it's Netflix or what, you may not be interested in this. I was because I knew this ministry uh, in Alma, Arkansas back years ago, Tony Olama. You may have heard of Tony Olama Boots. Well, this was a ministry that was literally a cult, a cult that theorized children. And it, 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 it was hard to watch, but I wanted to watch it and see how they used the Bible and how they used the scripture. Uh, and most cults do this. They, they program their people to be afraid to leave, even when they know it's not even true. They will stay with it. And people are still caught into a lot of different uh, religious sects somewhere because of their fear to leave, because it's, it's in their mind somewhere, if I leave, I will go to hell. God will punish in me. So people have given their minds and their hearts and their souls uh, away. Generally, generally what is always um, um, in some way connected to hell is fire. You shall burn in hell fire for all eternity. That didn't even appeal to my common sense. <laughs> so I want to talk about that just a little bit. Hebrews 12 and 29 says, For our God is a consuming fire. So is fire the dominion of Satan and the unbeliever? No, God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 1 and 7 says, And he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. Oh, I get fiery. You know I do. I'll sweat. <laughs> fire up here. <laughs> and it's called the fire of the Holy Spirit. My most favorite one of all is found in Psalms 139 and 8. David says, If I send up into heaven... Thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Well, that wouldn't make hell any more hell if God's there. Isn't that crazy? So wherever I am, I am. <laughs> so we're taking an existentialist idea that hell is what we create right here on earth. Trust me, go down there in Florida right now. Here the man that I heard this morning who was begging people, I have no home, I have no water, I have no food, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go, please help me. Literally was saying that on the radio today. Tell him that hell is in the afterlife. That hell will be his judgment at the end of life. Trust me, he's living in a hell. Pope John Paul. You know, the Catholic Church started waking up the last few, few decades, actually. There's been some, some cracks in it. And uh, I want to give you a quote from Pope John Paul. Hell is the pain, frustration, and emptiness of life without God. That came from Pope John Paul. That's powerful. Hell is the pain, frustration, emptiness of life, and without God. 
You that remember Neil Donald Walsh, yes. Conversations of God, how that shifted and changed everything. Hell is the opposite of joy, he says. It is unfulfillment, unenlightenment, alignment. It is knowing who, we, uh, who you are and failing to experience that. Wow. Hell. One of the words for hell, we used to sing a song about um, such a worm as I. I don't know what hymn it was in, but that, that was a hymn that was sung in church. Some, a worm, or I. And uh, there's a place where it talks about hell. Jesus is supposedly talking about hell, and uh, it is translated actually from a word to taros, or Gienna it is, which was in the Valley of Hinnom. The Valley of Hinnom was where Gienna was, which is translated hell. And it says it's where the worm dieth not. So that means hell is forever. No, the worm didn't die because it became a fly. It meta metamorphosed into a, a a different form of itself. So it didn't die as a worm, but it died as the form that it took. And the reason that was put in there is because the Valley of Hinnom was right outside the gates of Jerusalem. It is where the garbage was burned. And it was a fire that was always there for the refuge of the, of the, of the city to take your garbage. And oftentimes, criminals who had no identity and nobody identified them threw them into this place. And they were burned there. That's what he was referring to. He was not referring to some afterlife of being punished forever. You see the difference if you do a little study on these words and find out where they, where they actually come from. So here at Heartlight, it is time for us to leave the doctrines of baptism, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment of punishment. I find it so powerful that people continue to use this idea of hell. Let's talk about just a moment the lake of fire. I've heard of that one. You should be thrown into the lake of fire and tormented uh, forever. This is in Revelations 20 and 14. And death, now get this, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. So hell can't be the lake of fire because hell was tossed into it. So what's the lake of fire? This is the second death. In Aramaic and plain English, death and Sheol are cast into the lake of fire, this which is the second death. Religion has long referred to hell as being an unending lake of fire. Well, it's interesting they use the, the, the symbol of lake because a lake has all boundaries around it. Hmm? It's not an endless body of water. It is something that has boundaries on all sides. So that tells us that the hell you go through has boundaries. You don't have to be stuck in hell all your life. You don't have to go through that forever because there's always a way to get out of the lake. Just find the boundaries of the lake. Out of the concept of fire as lightning, it can be uh, the view of judgments of God uh, and bringing light and truth. The human race has not experienced freedom because truth has not been taught. Another form of the word uh, is pur, P-U-R, from which the word fire was taken, uh, which means to refine. Do you preach, somebody asked me one time, do you preach hell, fire, and brimstone? <laughs> I can say yes, I do. Now, because I understand what it means. Yeah. It's not a punishment. First of all, people have never understood what is brimstone, but it is sulfur, and it's what the Greek used to purify the impurities from that which was pure. It's like putting a diamond in its rough state that looks like coal into the fire, and it burns all the impurities, and that comes out a beautiful diamond. So fire here represents a place of purification. 
And sometimes when we go through these times, it does burn away the dross of unbelief. And we come out as a diamond, as a person. And a diamond shows the many facets of the light, right? And sometimes it takes going through. And you that ever been what you would call a hell experience in your life, abuse or a grief or abandonment or something like that, trust me, sitting right here or listening to me, you're a better person because of what you've been through. You're more compassionate. You're more understanding. Uh, it has molded a part of your soul that makes you a better person. Hell was not a physical place, but it is a place within our consciousness. It is a place in all of us, in our experiences. Part of being on the planet is to go through these times of refinement in which the fire, God, the consuming fire, consumes only that which is of hay, wood, and stubble. It talks about this parable that the fire only burns hay, wood, and stubble, but not the precious jewels of truth that is within us. So I just wanted to share. I could give you a whole bunch of stuff on this. It was an endless subject, but I'm not going to take a whole lot of time to, to go into it. You can do that in one of my books if you'd like. There is a whole chapter on it if you interested. I don't think most of you think that anyway that's here, but I wanted to put that out there to us that if there's anything in us, um, being raised in that type of religion, and you know how I feel about that first seven years, that we're not conscious, but we download, 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 download. And I think of all those revivals I was taken to. I remember being put on a blanket while my parents sang uh, music in these brush arbors. A brush arbor was a, a, a lot of brush and some poles uh, that made like a brush arbor with a yellow light to keep the bugs out and they'd have revivals every night and like tent revivals and whatever. And I was thinking uh, about one time, one, one of the early memories that I have is so clear and I don't know how I must have not been very old because I was being held and uh, I had just heard this message about the devil the devil kind of being in a red suit and all that kind of devil. And this man wanted to hold me and I looked at him, he had a red face and I started screaming. And that memory, that memory is burned into my consciousness of how frightened I was that they were handing me over to Satan because of that teaching. Now don't think that is not imprinted deeply somewhere in the un subconscious. That's one of my recordings. And if I don't change that recording, it will pop up once in a while, even when I mentally don't even believe it any longer. All of you have things that show up sometime and you go, but I don't believe that anymore. But it still shows up because you've not changed the pattern. You've not changed it. And that's what we want to work on and do. And that's why we're into energy work and tuning fork work here and all of that. Because we're trying to get a, something subtle as vibration to go in where the pattern is. Not where the effect is, but where the cause, where the pattern is, and repattern that in your etheric blueprint, right? Because that's what cells are going to read, cells are going to become. And that's why sometimes our bodies are in the shape that it's in, is because of the patterns that have not been changed in the subconscious part of ourselves. You say, well, I haven't believed that in 50 years. I haven't believed that in 30 years. But if the pattern is still there, the cell is reading the blueprint patterns of mispatterning of information that we have uh, uh, qualified into our belief system. So I know it sounds a little bizarre, but hell meant a grave. It meant a cellar, a hole in the ground. It meant a, a garbage dump. It meant all kinds of things except a place where God punishes people for all eternity. And again, I say to you, if I make my bed in the highest mountains, or if I make my bed in hell, thou 
art with me. You cannot destroy the I am of yourself. Wherever you are, you are. And wherever the divine is in you, it is. And that's why today we can change these places in our life that feels like some kind of hell in our life into places of purifying, a place of changing and getting, burning up the baggage that we care and burning up all the mispatternings that will end up as cancers and all kinds of diseases in our body. If we'll work with that now and head it off before it ever gets into the cellular structure and how that it comes forth, we can have a resurrection and raise our vibration and frequency and be Become a new creature in Christ. Amen. So hell yes? Hell yeah. hell or no. hell no. Hell no. Which one do you want? <laughs> hell no. I say to hell, hell no. <laughs> so I want to end with a little song that I thought might go with with this today. We'll sing, dance, and tell the world of his life on tales I and sees eye to eye. We shall restore love's creation more and show them they don't have to die. We all shall ascend while living in we're changed to with men, it is well. Redeemed we do sing, we dance for the King, till there is not one man in hell again. Oh, we'll sing, dance, and tell this world of his life, our tales I and sees eyes wide. We shall be so Love's creation more Show them they don't have to die We shall ascend them while living in We're changed till with man it is well Redeemed we do sing as we dance for the King Tell Sure.